What the? Wait, this is not Need for Speed. This, this, this is not. Okay. I know Filthy Frank. This need hey everyone, I'm Lorenzo, and in this video, I'm going to talk about all Need for Speed games on the PS2. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 is an arcade racer, it doesn't even try to be a simulator or to aim for realism, the physics are exaggerated. There are 54 cars in the Gamecube, Xbox and PC versions and 49 cars on the PS2 version, so you get less cars. But the PS2 version is slightly different in other aspects too, it's more extreme. The other versions are softer, for example in the PS2 version, when you get caught by the police, you get one of the three strikes, and the PS2 version is more detailed in sounds, and in the point system. It's the best version out of them. As for gameplay, you have two different ones. The main one is where you hop into one of the many cars the game offers and race, and while racing you have as a goal to finish on the first place while the police is on your back, and as you progress more and more into the races, the opponents will be tougher and the police will be tougher too, sending more vehicles, faster vehicles, tougher vehicles, even a helicopter that throws explosive barrels at you, and the other mode is when you hop into police cars and get after racers, so you play as the police. Also there are 12 race tracks in the game, and there is another game mode. World Championship, where you just race opponents, no cops, you just race in this 33 races. You also get challenges and race types like lap knockout, also drifting is hard in this game. So the handling isn't like in future Need for Speed titles, you're racing more straight than drifting your car sideways. Also the game doesn't have car customization like bumpers, spoilers, vinyls and stuff like that. All you can do is customize the color of your car. But this doesn't hinder the game to be fun, it's great. But I agree that it pales in comparison to future titles. And from now on we are on familiar turf. As with Need for Speed Underground, the Need for Speed as most of us know it is here. There are two Underground games released, Underground and Underground 2. I am going to talk in general about them as they are very similar. The game focuses on 9 time illegal street racing. You can buy cars and tune them both in performance and in visuals. And options are plenty. Especially in Underground 2, the tuning is based on making your car look like you are a racer. Both games have free room. Underground has 30 cars to choose from and Underground 2 has 38 cars. As for game modes, Underground has Circuit where you race in laps, Knockout where the last one to cross the finish line is eliminated, Sprint which is a race from point A to point B, Drift where the one with the most drift points wins and Drag where you have to manual shift on a straight line and whoever shifts best and has the better car wins. And Underground 2 doesn't have knockout but it has all the other race modes plus many more and they are Outrun where you have to be over 300 meters away from the competition to win, Special Event where you have to get to a location marked on the GPS in a time limit, Street X where you race on special tracks that have tight corners and you also get SUV events as this game doesn't have only normal cars, but big SUVs too. Also, this is not the only category where Underground 2 has more content. In customization you get way more options. And in this plot you are just a guy that, that relaxedly shows that he's the best. You can appear, your car appears on magazine covers, you get sponsors, you can add speakers in your trunk, horns, spinners, basically Underground 2 is way denser than its predecessor and has better graphics too and a bigger map. The game is a masterpiece I recommend anyone to play. Then Need for Speed Most Wanted, another legend, takes the action during daylight. Now you race during the day and this game brings something new on the table on the illegal street racing ambience underground created. Cops. 
Now you get police chases. And they get to extreme levels when you are being pursued on big heat levels. I'm talking about spikes, SUVs slamming into you, speedy corvettes are overtaking you, helicopters chasing after you, and all this creates adrenaline. And considering that now you don't have to get rid of the cops on point A to point B on racetracks, like in Hot Pursuit, but rather help for to free room and escape the cops, you can get creative and get more enjoyment out of the experience. In the game, your sweet BMW is stolen by deception and you have to retrieve it. But Razer, the jerk that gets your car, got into the blacklist of the most wanted racers in the city. So now you are starting from the bottom and beat every blacklist member so that you can challenge the big fish, Razer, to a race where the winner gets the pink slip and get your car back. While ascending the blacklist, you have to get past some milestones, like challenges with the police, for example to be pursued by the police for a certain amount of time, or to damage stuff in a certain value. Also you have to win races, and there are multiple types of them. Circuit, sprint, drag, lap, knockout, speed trap, where you have to race point to point and have surpassed a certain speed when going next to the speed radar, and tool booth, point to point races with time limit. Also you get a special ability, the speed breaker, where you can slow down time and get better maneuverability to take on tight corners in high speeds. Also you can customize lots of cars both visually and performance wise, but you don't have the riser options like in underground 2, like horns or speakers in the trunk, but rather basic stuff like hoods, spoilers, bumpers and so on. Oh, and you also get quick races, and you can get chased by the police while free roaming too. It's a legendary game. If you haven't played it yet, just do it. This one too is a masterpiece that, if you're not playing it, you are missing out big time. Need for Speed Carbon takes place in Palmon City. After some time passed since the events of Most Wanted, there are factions in the city, and you have to beat them. All the races now take place during the night. As innovations, it brings creating crews and canyon dual racing. Creating crews means that you get accompanied by a wingman and they do different stuff. You get three different kind of crew members. Blocker. Blockers take out a targeted vehicle of an opponent by ramming and forcing them to stop. The drafter, which means that your crewmate magically drives in front of you so that you can draft from him but it isn't useful when you drive with high speeds which you are going to do you get the scout scouts locate and take shortcuts along the track shortcuts they take are highlighted on the minimap by dotted green lights as for the other innovation the canyon duel they are epic you race in tight roads in the mountains and any world couldn't describe how awesome they are. Ju just try them, you'll see why they are so good. In rest, you can tune cars and have similar race modes like in the other ones. This one is an awesome game too. In my opinion, not like most wanted, but still worthy to be played. And as a side note, I have no idea how they could have ruined the drift mechanics if they already had it right in the other games. The drift mechanics in the drift race mode in Carbon feels like it's an Android game. Need for Speed Pro Street now gets into the legal stuff. You don't race illegally, but legally. In a festival competition. You play as Ryan Cooper and head to different events, dominate them, challenge the best out of the best, and then take on Rio, the man who disrespected you after your first race. A downside to the game is that now, if you destroy your car, you have to pay a big amount of money to repair it. So damaging the car is not an option in this game. Even the slightest damage has impact on the performance of your vehicle. Also since there are legal street races, there are no cop chases anymore. Oh, and you don't have free room in this one. You just jump from one event to the other. But at least you can still customize your vehicles. And the game looks very good. As for race modes, you get the classic ones, but which are slightly altered in this game. As you can see from the description, they are renamed, but in their core they are similar. 
So try out Pro Street if it seems nice to you. For me, the lack of free roam, illegal racing and the fact that you have to pay for every damage the vehicle takes were downsides that made the experience less enjoyable. But the game is still very good. Need for Speed Undercover returns to the awesome illegal street racing scene. But it's not that great. It's similar to most wanted. You get free room again, you race during the daylight, you get chased by the police and you have many different race modes you can compete in. But it's so similar to most wanted that the map is actually a reskinned Rockport city that was made to look more Miami-ish. This is not the same game you get on PC or PS3. No, the PS2 version is different to those. And it's disappointing. The game has performance issues like choppy frame rates, random glitches that make other cars brain dead, and a police system that is total crap. Police cars bump into you and then you get chased. And police cars spawn so much it's a pain to escape them. Also getting busted occurs only if you do it on purpose. I don't know how they could have ruined the great mechanic from Need for Speed Most Wanted. I mean here it's a similar mechanic but with brain dead AI, police cars that spawn too frequently and who can't even get you busted, it's like a stormtrooper army. In Need for Speed Most Wanted, the police chases were difficult, but at least they were fair and fun, but here they are just stupid. The police won't be busting you because they can't apparently, only if you really let them, I mean, you have to completely stop your car and remain there for like a solid minute for them to bust you. And they spawn all over the place, so that police chases are rather more annoying, they take too much and are too lousy to be fun. And the minimap is not updated in some parts, meaning that the minimap tells you there's a shortcut or road, but you end up in an invisible barrier instead. Or you realize that actually that part of the map was patched out and there is no shortcut anymore in that part. Also a big turn down is the draw distance. It's horrible. On emulators you can tweak that. But when you play natively, the poor draw distance can get on your nerves, especially while being chased furiously by the police. You can't escape. Don't play the game. It's good to buy only if you're a hardcore game collector and eagerly want all Need for Speed games in your collection. The core mechanics are still solid, I mean in its core it's still Need for Speed most wanted. But this game is a brain dead glitchy Need for Speed. You will have fun most of the time with the game, but those brain dead moments will get on your nerves, especially during police chases. And why waste money on a Need for Speed game that is good but has frustrating moments when you can buy yourself a masterpiece? Ok so this was the video, if you liked it please hit the like button and subscribe, if you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section, you will help me a lot. If you want you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord and if you want to see another video of mine just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.